Hello and welcome to Campaign Preview 3. Today we've got a very special video. We're going to be taking a look at part of the economic campaign available in Stronghold Wars at launch. Um, today I've got with me again, once again, Matt Smith. Matt, how's it going? Hello. Uh, it's, yeah, it's going well. It's going well. That was a very sultry hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's not a lot of human contact at the moment, so I'm not used to talking to people as much. It's true, it's true. <laughs> So you've got to be as suave as possible when you jump on a call. <laughs> it's it's potluck, you know. If you go a day without talking to people, uh, <laughs> it could come up, you know, it could be hello, or it could be hello, you know, <laughs> anything in between. And how and how you long since you've on. had a coffee as well? <laughs> yes, yes. So today we're looking at um, some flooding, aren't we? Do you want to explain uh, the concept of flooding in in Stronghold, which I'm not sure we've had before. Now this is a new feature. Um, uh, the, the sort of idea behind it was we've had, you know, missions with time limits. That's not new. Um, but um, we wanted to give uh, the time limit mechanic a little bit more uh, in-game mm. depth resonance. Um, so it was more evident uh, and physically present there yep. in the game. Like, you know, you it's one thing to have a timer counting down, but here you've got a very real threat. Yeah. A very real visible threat. And we're also, um, meanwhile, raising awareness of global warming at the same time. Exactly, exactly. So what so, kind of yeah. impact can people um, sort of uh, you know, expect from the flooding? Like, can it destroy buildings? Can it, you know, um, can it drown peasants? <laughs> Yep, yeah, yeah. No, once it gets high enough, anything before below the waterline um, is uh, in in deep trouble. So that's the other aspect to it beyond go, sort of a regular time limit on a mission is you actually have to think about where you place your buildings. Yep. Um, and maybe you want to kickstart your economy at the start of the map, and you know, just want to spread things out a bit, but you. you, you accounting for the fact that that land's not going to be available indefinitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, and on this map, the water levels will sort of rise and fall during uh, gameplay. Yes, yes. Um, we've got it as part of our sort of map scenario editor. Um, we've got quite fine control over when the, the, the floodwaters hit mm -hmm. um, and what levels they go to. Um, and that sort of thing. Um, from the technical point of view, it's actually separate from uh, the existing water systems we have. Um, so we're able to control it as its own thing, separate from everything else. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't know. My, my <laughs> the grammar wasn't quite right there. But, um, <laughs> but were, were you get any kind of warning about... Because I saw there was some rain um, towards the start of this. Was that kind of designed as a, a visual tell that you might get some, some flood waters coming up? Um, yes. Um, and again, even though it's separate, it's an, another aspect of the tools we have in our uh, map editor that you can say, okay, well, from this point to this point, um, uh, I want to change the weather. Um, and that could be done as a purely visual thing. So what we tend to do is um, have a visual aspect of the rain going hand in hand with the flooding. Um, and like you say, it's a visual tell. You can definitely see, you know, it becomes a bit gloomy and you can see the rain coming down. Um, and maybe some of the ground will get, start to look a little waterlogged. Um, so you've definitely, you've got that warning. Mm -hmm. um, we, we actually also then have thunderstorms as uh, uh, part of our event system. Cool. Um, which players... Which, which you're seeing right now with the, with the tiger attack. Mm. So yes, that icon in the, uh, the bottom right there. Uh, yeah, it means that some tigers are on the prowl. Um, and... They're, they're pretty. They're pretty fearsome. Uh, I have noticed as well, actually, that the tiger's health bar is starting to pulse. Is that kind of a quality of life um, change made? Is it? Is that for their special attack? Their kind of like their charge or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is actually something I worked on uh, quite quite recently. Um, you know, we have units in the game that have special abilities 
uh, special attacks, buffs, that sort of thing. Mm. Um, and I was, and previously we'd done it through a system of icons um, on the health bar. Um, and myself and others weren't entirely happy with the look of them. Mm. Um, because the trick is, is trying to present information in a way that's accessible, but doesn't clutter up the screen. Yeah. <clears throat> so the solution we came up with was to have, in in this instance, the pulsing of the health bar. So that shows that the tiger's sort of pounce ability um, is available yeah. to it. Um, and will that apply to your this... troops as well, if you've got like troops with special um, active abilities? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I can't remember what troops we've uh, given details on already, um, but there are a few that have special attacks. Um, we've got some you know, AoE type attacks in yep. there. Um, those who played Crusader 2, we had the Whirling Dervish. Similar. Um, we've had some tweaks, but you know, loosely similar in, in how it operates. Um, very loosely. <laughs> in terms of it's an ability on a cooldown, mm. um, and when you see that glint on the health bar, um, that means that the ability is ready, and you'll see that on your troops, um, and you'll generally see it on other troops enemy troops um mm. so you can you know plan accordingly yeah um and that's yeah that's that's worked quite nicely um we're, so we're trying to do that other... kind of, we're trying to kind of you know unclutter the ui pretty much across mm -hmm. the board right um so in this demo you can see that um we've shrunk down the ui a little bit and ui scaling will be something that you know we have as an option um in the game for players because we know that you know, just because you play at a certain resolution doesn't mean you want the UI necessarily at a certain size. Yes, yeah. Um, it's nice to be able to separate those two things out and give players uh, the control. And and we've been actually we've been going through um, sort of finalising what options players are going to have. Um, and we're quite pleased with the amount of control that players are going to have mm. um, over the look and feel of... Yeah. In this case, the UI um, and the, the the scale of it, and yeah, if you want to have as much sort of screen real estate for what's in world as possible, yeah, you can shrink it down. Yeah. Or if you want everything to be big and bold on the UI, you can go the yeah. other. Well, I, I completely yeah. forgotten the other day that, like, you know, so for instance, in the, on the left hand side of the screen, you can see the objectives, right? So, um, for those that don't know, an economic mission, uh, you know, all the goals are economic. You might have some threats from sort of you know a small number of bandits or in this case tigers um but in this mission we have to uh, collect a thousand tea build a grand temple uh, reach a population of 60 build a couple of embassies and collect 500 meat all the while you know um fighting against floodwaters um and the time limits um and the other fail uh, situation would be getting your lord eaten by tigers, which would be impressive because your lord's quite high up. Um, but I completely forgot until recently that you can just um, tap those objective icons and, and, and move them away. So, yeah, we're hoping we can, you know, you can occupy as much or as little of the, of the game screen as possible, um, as, as much as you want with the UI versus, you know, actual sort of um, gameplay view. Yeah, I mean, we'd had debate internally uh, about how much information to present you know some people felt um the, you know there's no such thing as too much and other people wanted the absolute bare minimum and in the end we thought well let's give let's give players the choice yeah. wherever we can i'm definitely of the latter camp <laughs> but obviously like that kind of <laughs> philosophy only works for certain types of games right like it's much easier to have a super minimalist ui in a third person action game than it is in a, a real time strategy game <laughs> <laughs> yes yes there is a lot of information to convey in one form or another. Speaking of which, we can see the markets auto buy and auto sell there very, very briefly. Yeah. But, that, yeah, but that's yeah, another that's returning it. feature that, yeah. I always like to plug Stronghold Legends, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that was the first game that, that featured it. Um, and it was kind of like something that was just added, not as part of the original design, but ended up being a fan favorite. Yeah, yeah. Uh... I, yes, so, so does, I, sorry, just to cut you off, that. does the rain that we're looking at now mean that we're expecting a flood? Uh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, uh, it's uh, it's sort of light rain at the moment. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's it's when the <clears throat> it's when the 
<laughs> well, uh, if I remember rightly, uh, you'll see something a little bit more dramatic uh, later on in the mission. So. But this is like a light London rain that you might expect. Yes, yeah. <laughs> on a dreary Tuesday. Well, um, yeah. Oh no, being, there it goes. It's starting to film. The... Ah, yes, there we are. Yes. Ah, the peasants oh. died. Oh, poor guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's. Uh, yes, I fear for those houses. So buildings and peasants can be destroyed. So you essentially kind of, you might do like a risk or reward thing, I guess, if you want to build housing and economy buildings at the lower level and then maybe delete them when you when you know that flood, you know, the floods are coming. Uh, I'm sure players who uh, are much better at the games than, than I am will be able to figure <laughs> out clever, clever strategies around that. A good example uh, being Dave, who is who's playing it for us at the moment, our producer in um, QA lead. Yes, a uh, <laughs> bit of um, multiplayer testing going on at the moment, and I don't tend to fare well whenever <laughs> <laughs> actual uh, skill is involved. Uh, you're you're more fodder for the other people testing it. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Contribute in my own way. <laughs> exactly. But yes, yeah, so you can see the rain stopped, the, the floods have subsided mm. for now, question mark. Um, but uh, it, it definitely sort of conveys the, the threat. Yeah. Uh, and it gives kind of more purpose as well, I guess, to being able to rebuild and delete buildings and um, all that kind of stuff. Yes. Yes. It's Instead of it just being like deleting building something you, you do when, you, when you're up against it and you're about to lose and you go, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to just going to delete everything and hope for the best. Yeah. Um, and it's one thing we've... Um, try to change this this game is is giving more places or more opportunities for players to really think about and make use of their space mm. um you know, some some rts's and to an extent some of older games you know you ha you'd have a fairly rote a very standard way of, of of laying things out so we're trying to spice things up a little bit in that regard yeah I can see water pots being placed now. I guess even with the rains, there's always a chance of fire. Yes. Yeah. So um, it's just because Dave seems to have it have this mission generally in the bag at this point. So I guess he's just trying to, um, you know, protect against all possible eventualities. Yeah. Nothing wrong with you know health and safety. Yeah. Uh, can collect some rainwater in there as well. High alkaline content. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I can see that they've they've built the Grand Temple as well. So that's that objective completed. Um, I think briefly when the when the temple was placed as well, you got a quick look at the radius of that. Yes, and again it comes back to what I was saying before, is trying to get the information on screen mm. in, in a world. way that's Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, oh, he looks like he's a little bit. Uh, I can't tell. Is he short on peasants, or is he? You see the Zeds coming off the uh, the water pot there. I it, think he's just turned them off because he's like, I don't need them right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is the uh, again uh, an advanced <laughs> strat. I was gonna say saving them for a rainy day, but I think that's a poor choice of phrasing. <laughs> well, I think you said uh, you said deep trouble earlier, so that's definitely a worse pun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I just wanted to go back to. Um, uh, the temple for a second. Mm -hmm. um, players, eagle eyed players might notice um, the they now have the, the, the sort of priest that spawns when you place them, and um, he'll potter around yep. your village, you know, speaking to people, blessing buildings and stuff. Uh, uh, I have you to thank for teaching me the term boozle factor. <laughs> um, well, I th I'm pretty sure this was a player suggestion, wasn't it? I believe so. Yeah, it might have been a mix yes. of something we'd already intended and something people were asking for, but I'm, I'm fairly certain. Um, I'm pretty sure there's. It been might a even few been things like that. Yeah, where, um, we've seen you know watching the Discord and someone says something and you think, oh, actually, yes, that would that would actually be quite straightforward to add. Um, mm. And would definitely add something to the game. Um, yeah. and yeah, that was one of them. And you'll see something similar with um, a few of the. Um, the town buildings, is the, the 
the, the category we use. So you know, rather than say uh, a production building, um, so you know embassies. Um, good lord bad lord buildings um you'll see people pottering around going about their business um and uh, yeah it really helps it to feel like a living breathing village i've actually noticed that other companies have started to use the term i mean the term isn't new but uh, i have noticed that um certain other developers and publishers have started to talk about voozle factor <laughs> which uh, didn't happen until we were talking about it. So there you go. You know, just same with trend. You're a trendsetter. We, we, yeah. Matt, we are as as the <laughs> collectively as the developer. We are we are trendsetters. But um, yes, I I'm do like saying it. I'm not sure whether it's spelt with a C or a K though. I'm oh, pretty sure it's a K. Yeah, it feels I mean, we, like it should be. Yeah, we could just uh, ask our German community manager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But yes, um, Fusil Factor is. I just like. I just like saying it as well. It's just quite satisfying to say in a video. Fusil Factor. Believe me, Nick. I'm. I'm. I'm aware of how much you enjoy this. Video. Believe me. <laughs> well, I'm just like to shorten it to Fusil now. <laughs> Internally now, I really? just say it needs more Fusil. Yeah, I was saying this to uh, to someone on the project yesterday. We were like, oh, this this part could do with a bit more Fusil. Nice, nice. It'll just keep getting shortened until it's just W. We're just gonna slowly turn into a German company. <laughs> One day you'll wake up and you'll realise we're based in Hamburg. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the um, the new the new blue flowers and the vegetation. Yeah, I'm a big uh, fan of some of the vegetation we've added. Those. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so they've go they've gone through a few few iterations, um, and um, yeah, we managed to get those hooked up. So they sort of depending on the weather. Um, they'll 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 move around a bit. So, oh, cool! Um, I've definitely seen that with the trees. Yes, yeah, and we had a little bit of that in the previous game, but we went through and actually, you know, stitched stitched the code for handling the weather and the events. Stitched that into the code for handling the vegetation, and um, cool. so it all helps to sort of again reinforce this thing of this is something happening in the world. Yeah, rather than a more abstract. Yeah, feature. it's nice when things come together like that. I know the last sort of 10% of, of, of every game project is really tough work, but it is satisfying at the same time. Yes, yeah. When all um, the pieces start to slide into place. Yeah, and especially you spot the opportunities to do it. and yeah. So you maybe weren't necessarily planning to, to do that, to... to Add that bit of polish, but you've got you know you've got two components that are working nicely, and you see, oh yeah, I can just point that thing at that thing, um, and uh, they'll all play well together. And again, keep coming back to it, but add this sense of a real, complete world, mm. which is kind of like the prerequisite for making a because the game's quite simulation based. You know, it's 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 obviously an RTS. Um, at least half of it is an RTS, but you know, there's a massive simulation component. Yeah, um, but I mean, that's yes. This is the economic campaign. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure it, yeah. when we were listed on the, the the Gamescom website, we were actually listed under simulation. So, okay, our colleagues yeah. at Gamescom clearly believe that we are, <laughs> you know, the the sim game as much as we are the um, the RTS. I mean, I'm I'm definitely more of a sim player than an RTS player mm. um, in terms of my my personal background in gaming. Um, I I definitely used to be I the mean, complete opposite, but I've come around. Like I love, um, I think it was Le Legends again, uh, but Legends had an economic war mode, ooh. which I was a big fan of. So oh, here we go, the lightning storm. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. But, uh, <laughs> So yeah, right, something that you some... that something that you worked on that you're proud of. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, this was uh, myself and Andreas um, uh, put this together. Uh, um, yeah, I'm pretty pretty pleased with it. Um, uh, we've got the in particular the, the effect for sort of making the the ground look a bit boggy, a little yeah. bit waterlogged. Um, I won't. I'll, I'll spare you all the the technical details of <laughs> how I achieved that. But yes, a little bit of minor wizardry to get that working. And and the lightning. I mean, we had the lightning in the previous game, um, but um, we just sort of had the lightning bolts. 
yeah. coming down uh, at standalone things. But again, uh, so <laughs> repeating myself a bit, but you could see the flashes of lightning there, the the, the sort of the the flashes illuminating the ground. Yeah. This was something I added, um, and these sort of momentary light sources in various places in the sky. That's really so cool. again. Once again, it's something that's happening in the world, I and mean, it all ties together. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, but yes, along with along with all that rain comes yeah. a lot more water. Wonderful. And on that note, I think Dave's pretty much completed this mission, so I think we'll wrap up. Matt, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to me today. Um, I hope always a pleasure. Hope you enjoyed it, and everyone enjoyed watching the video. One more